Welcome to Divinity Original Sin 2, a game where you can do anything, be anyone, do anyone? In this game, you play as an adventurer chosen by God to be God or something. I don't really know. All I care about is the number going up. You can tell through my extensive hours in, uh... When I originally got this game in 50 million BC, my friends wanted to play with me. However, I declined. This was the wrong answer. Because the game is, uh, incredibly fun. Today we begin the journey of four ill-conceived adventurers on their quest to escape the perilous clutches of the Magisters and flee from Fort Joy. So, let us begin. We begin the game like any good RPG does, with character creation. And we all make, uh, lovely creatures. We also all for some reason decide to play as undead, which makes things a tad bit harder, as all the citizens of this world abhor the undead and see them as an affront to God. I mean, I don't blame them. Have you seen my other videos? Now let me introduce you to the members of our undead crew. We have Corflax, the Lizard Death Knight, My Ass Wen, the Human Tank, Fibblespick, the Dwarf Warrior, and hold on, Dagingus Retusier. I, I don't really know what he does. With this team, we will surely defeat and conquer whatever foes and challenges await us. But before we can do all that, we first start on a prison ship headed to Australia. No joke, that's the actual story. It is here where my friends abandon me after stealing from literally the first NPC, for which I promptly get accused. Not at all knowing how this game worked at that point, I tried to use my overflowing charm and charisma to convince the Magister that in fact, no, she does not need to search my bags. She does not take kindly to this and shows me how disgruntled she is by proceeding to initiate combat with pretty much everyone in the surrounding level. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not how the game is supposed to be played. I then proceed to get fucking domed by a group of magisters before the whole deck falls into chaos. Now the story NPCs are getting involved and doing most of the fighting for us. The party is in complete disarray with none of us having any equipment to fight with. The NPCs however are just continuing to fuck shit up, killing many of the magisters while our entire party plays dead. Or you could just say we are roleplaying our characters. This worked in our favour as both Fibblespick and Dagingus acted essentially as doorstops to the magisters, not allowing them to move into the main area. After a while, the team starts to wake up from playing dead, and that goes about as well as you'd expect. I end up getting revived and thrown into my first actual combat of the game. The class I am playing is the Spectre, which revolves around using my abilities to stack agony and utilize those stacks to do the funny. After the combat has concluded with a close victory, we then proceed through the ship to reach some weapons. This probably would have been helpful before the massive fight, but I digress. We continue up the ship until we reach the top deck, where we find this big creature and much smaller, cuter creatures attacking the ship. We put down these creatures and escape to the mainland. Welcome to Fort Joy. Contrary to the name, this place fucking sucks. It's a prison camp ran by the same magisters that tried to kill us on the boat. They seem to operate this place with an extreme hands-off approach, meaning they don't actually care if we kill each other, just as long as we don't try and kill them. Once we get to the fort proper, my ass Wynn and Fibblespick proceed to pickpocket almost every merchant in the area, making them both extremely wealthy and allowing us to be geared extremely well for the level we are at. Nonetheless, we must actually level up to be properly ready for the trials ahead. For our first task, we are assigned to kill a bunch of crocodiles. Why? I'll get back to that later. But for now, all you need to know is that I goobered up yet again and started combat without the entire team being ready. But thankfully, due to our epic gamer moves, we were able to defeat these three creatures without any casualties. I also got a human limb out of it. Hmm, delicious. And Ars received the item we came here for, the teleportation gloves. With this, he can now become the real goober and teleport enemies, allies, and more to wherever he wishes, which makes for some interesting situations later on. We also kill a group of gamblers simply because Fibblespick didn't want to pay up when he lost in poker. Following the directions of some shady character, he tells us that he will help us escape Fort Joy, and tells us to use the teleportation glove to enter a cave by the shore. This then takes us to the Magister's BDSM sex chamber, where we see a group of five dastardly enemies very much out of our pay grade. Figuring that we need to get more geared before we can face such a threat, we back out, except for Dagingus, who gets attacked by them like an absolute bozo. Back to killing, we decide that our next target is going to be Migo, a crazed man eating corpses on the beach. 
Hey, that's my job. After all of us properly get into position, Ars initiates the fight by immediately teleporting him into the water and getting him all wet and probably a little bit uncomfortable. Not only that, but he is incredibly pissed. It is here where we get the first taste of the combat randomizer, as at the end of Migo's turn, he lets out a fart that stuns everyone caught inside. This, however, is only a moderate inconvenience, as I am not a barbarian, and instead a pussy who attacks at range. He drops a chest piece that I cannot use. We next decide to kill a bunch of frogs, which involved a disproportionate amount of time being hidden as rocks and barrels. The frogs are dealt with swiftly, with only a slight bit of tomfoolery along the way. A very unremarkable fight with some turtles later, and we stumble across a ship with a defenseless woman being surrounded by the magisters. I have a feeling that there was some sort of story or plot in this section, but that goes right out the window when Ars teleports the most powerful of the magisters off the ship and into the water, causing him to do nothing but growl at us during the entire fight, as he is a melee enemy. L. This is very convenient for us, as this dude probably would have kicked our asses almost single-handedly, as can be seen by Dagingus' fatal blunder. During the fight, Fibblespick does a funny and the NPC that was originally on our side goes sicko mode and starts attacking us instead. She doesn't get very far. Eventually the fight boils down to Dagingus and I attacking the enemy in the water as Ars watches on and Fibblespick just fucks off back to Fort Joy. After this lively afternoon, we decide to try our hand at fighting the dudes down in the dungeon. Despite my insistence during the fight that all is going well, it does not all go well. Realizing that our fatal flaw was yet again our armor level, we decide to go on a quest to find more armor. So how did that lead us to just outright escaping Fort Joy? Well, I'll tell you. In our quest to find armor, we decided to find a merchant named Zalaskar, who sells some pretty beefy equipment. So that required us to progress through to the next area, which involved us sneaking through the Hall of Penitence and past High Judge Oravand, who looks like a very charming fellow. Once we get to the other side, we would be able to talk to Zalaskar and see his wares. But of course, we aren't actually gonna buy anything. <laughs> I fucking love this game. Now with our new equipment, we are able to take on this fight yet again, to which which Dagingus and I die rather quickly, even with our new equipment, leaving Ars and Fibblespick to carry the encounter, to which they managed to, but not without difficulty. After a close encounter with the Houndsmaster, we decide it's time to get even better gear. So we make our way to the Sanctuary of Amadia, where very quickly, every trader suddenly finds themselves low on stock. But not to worry, with these fancy new abilities and gear I just happened to stumble upon, I'll take down those thieves when I find them. Also, an incredible turn of good luck, Fibblespick actually stumbles across a bag containing a small sum of 40,000 gold, which he kindly evenly distributes among the party, because we are such an ample example of communism. Once we got geared, however, we decided that our next move was just to straight up assassinate the CEO of Fort Joy, High Judge Oravand. We begin by crawling our way through the sewers and killing some rabid dogs, even this one just chilling in a cave, which is a little bit unnecessary. Finally, we make our way up to him and begin the fight. One of the best things about this fight is that, because of the combat randomizer, his bodyguards end up being more of a threat than he is. But through the use of proper coordination and... <clears throat> great teamwork, we end up felling such a threatening foe. But why stop there? For the next hour and a bit, the team goes on a crusade killing every Magister in Fort Joy, as well as killing Wendigo, the sorcerer who got us all into this mess in the first place when she did the sussy. After defeating the Magisters and the Witch, we decide to continue on our quest to get more experience, which leads us to the cute void creatures from earlier. Except, these ones talk, and they are pretty creepy. And holy shit, they give a thousand XP each? Soon after, we find a mysterious castle, guarded by the horrors beyond my comprehension. It is here where we find another NPC having a hard time with the Magisters. Unlike last time, however, we do not kill this one, as he is a fucking Chad, and everyone likes us after we save him. They like us so much, in fact, that we now get the privilege of no longer having a dog collar around our necks for the foreseeable future. It also allows us to do some pretty cool stuff. Next, we crawl into a dark cavern where we meet an enigmatic figure named Trompdoy. Trompdoy is what we call not there in the head, and turns out to have multiple personality disorder, 
not knowing which damn class he wants to play. After kicking his ass and raiding the treasure vault he was commanded to defend, we then get teleported and talk to one of the gods, who said they chose us to fight evil for some reason. Soon after, we stumble across a beach inhabited by a dragon who is chained up in a a uh, compromising position. After freeing him, he tells us of a witch who enslaved him and how she is just chilling in a nearby cavern. Naturally, we go to kill her. This fight was not fun and full of blunders on my part like this. But in the end, we did defeat the witch, barely, and we did end up freeing the dragon, who actually turned out to be a scaly who got far too invested into playing his OC. This, however, finally opens the path to the final boss. This fight was a mess by all definitions of the word. You'll find my profile greyed out for most of the fight, because for most of the fight I was fucking dead, and every time the team revived me, I would just get bonked immediately, even if there was, you know, a giant death worm in front of them. But anyway, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. The fight started well, with pretty much all of us getting good starting shots, especially my damage on big boy Geist. It was then when we realized something. Bishop Alexander had a buff, called Faith Aura, which gives every enemy a faith buff and a flat 50% damage increase. Or oh, no. Very quickly, the fight becomes messier and messier when a void worm from the pits of the abyss just rocks up and kills a few magisters and gives us a few moments to rest. Uh, not me though, I get res camped multiple times for some reason. <laughs> After Dagingus and I are dead for a while, Ars leaves and then comes back completely healed and reses us in not bad positions. So we can just flee and be able to get back at max HP. Some may call this a bitch move and... Shut up. Eventually we defeat the final enemy, and some woman just appears out of nowhere and invites us on a ship to leave the island. And that concludes the first act of Divinity Original Sin 2. Stay tuned for next time, where me and the gang continue to fight against the horrors of the void. If you want to see more of this series, please like and subscribe to let me know, and if you don't, well, uh...